This is Ichigo Kurosaki, and Bleach is his story. Pretty much your average 15-year-old kid, Ichigo lives in the Japanese town of Karakura, with his twin sisters Karin and Yuzu, and their loving, if overbearing, father Ishin. Ichigo goes to school, gets good grades, and sometimes gets into fights thanks to his striking orange hair. There is one unusual thing about him, however. He can see ghosts. The world of Bleach is haunted by spirits, invisible to the normal human eye. These ghosts come in different forms, from the friendly, often timid pluses to the monstrous, malevolent hollows. Colossal, beast-like creatures who devour other spirits and humans alike. One night, a mysterious woman clad in a black outfit steps through the wall into Ichigo's bedroom. This is Rukia Kuchki, a Shinigami, or a god of death. Surprised Ichigo can see her, Rukia explains that as a Shinigami, it's her job to help spirits pass on to the afterlife, to a world called the Soul Society, but more on that later. That night, the Kurosaki household comes under attack. A hollow is seeking out Ichigo, wanting to devour him. Rukia attempts to defend him, but suffers a mortal wound. In a desperate last-ditch effort to save them both, Rukia stabs Ichigo with her Zan Pakuto, the weapon of a Shinigami, and transfers him some of her Shinigami powers. The transfer is a success. Ichigo, now a Shinigami himself and wielding a colossal blade, defeats the Hollow. Unfortunately, the transfer of powers worked too well. Rukia has been stripped of all her powers, leaving her stranded in the human world for the time being. So, until Rukia's powers can return to her, Ichigo takes on the role of a substitute Shinigami, filling in for Rukia and defending the residents of Karakura Town from hollows, including his close friends Orohime Inoue and Sado Chad Yasutora. One particularly nasty hollow who is evil in life as well is sent to hell, instead of the Soul Society. Ichigo undertakes a variety of missions, ranging from capturing a renegade called Con to helping Don Konoji, a famous TV personality, best a hollow in the local hospital. But one day, Ichigo asks to pause his substitute Shinigami duties. It's the anniversary of his mother, Masaki's death. During a trip to the graveyard so the family can pay their yearly respects, the Kurosaki sisters are attacked by the foulest hollow of them all, Grand Fisher, a true villain and the hollow responsible for attacking and killing Masaki so many years ago. Despite a vicious battle where Ichigo is seriously wounded, he gains the upper hand on the hollow and, after dealing a critical blow, forces Grand Fisher to flee. Settling into his role, Ichigo's beliefs are challenged by a boy in his class, Uryu Ishida, a mystical archer with a vendetta against the Shinigami. Uryu belongs to a clan called the Quincy, who were wiped out 200 years ago by the Shinigami. Uryu baits an army of hollows to Karakura Town in order to kill them all, but things quickly get out of hand. During the appearance of these hollows, Ichigo's friends Orohime and Chad develop powers and abilities of their own. Orohime gains the power of the Shun Shunrika, six fairies born from her hair pieces that can create defensive shields and restore wounds, while Chad wields the right arm of the giant, which gives him immense destructive and defensive power. Ichigo and Uryu put their differences aside and work together to fight a Menos Grande, a towering hollow, with Ichigo eventually repelling it, showcasing unbelievable latent strength. Everything seems to be working out well for Ichigo and the others, but one night, two shadowy figures arrive in Karakura, and they're here to arrest Rukia. The two figures are high-ranking officers from the Soul Society itself, Vice Captain Renji Abarai and Captain Byakia Kuchki, Rukia's older brother. Rukia has committed the grave crime of giving a human her Shinigami powers, and now the Soul Society has issued a warrant for her capture. Ichigo tries to save Rukia and momentarily manages to overpower Renji, but is quickly defeated and incapacitated by Byakia. The trio of Shinigami leave the boy lying in the rain, his life seeping out of him. On the soaking wet ground, Ichigo awaits his fate. Except suddenly, the rain stops. Ichigo is rescued on the brink of death by the mysterious Kisuke Urahara, the owner of the local Urahara candy store, a shady man with a hidden agenda and historical ties to the Soul Society. 
Urahara heals Ichigo and takes him under his wing, promising to help him not only unlock his own Shinigami powers, but make him strong enough in 10 days to take on the Soul Society and rescue Rukia from her grisly fate. At the same time, Orohime and Chad are taught to use their own powers by a talking black cat called Mr. Yoroichi, an associate of Urahara's, while Uryu masters his own Quincy abilities. Through a series of three trials, Ichigo finds himself within his inner world, a spiritual place inside every Shinigami's soul, where he talks with a strange man in black. Eventually, after nearly becoming a hollow at the hands of Urahara's brutal tests, Ichigo realises his true Shinigami power and transforms, bearing both a Zanpak toe of his own and a sinister-looking hollow mask. But we'll get to that a little later. As Ichigo continues to battle Urahara, he also learns the name of his Zanpak toe and the ghostly man in black, Zangetsu. After continuing their training for a few more days, the gang comes together at Urahara's shop, where they prepare for their journey to the Soul Society to dive deep into the heart of the enemy and save Rukia from certain doom. So, with Ichigo and the others on their way to the Soul Society, it seems like now is a good time to explore the Shinigami a bit deeper. There was a lot of terminology there, after all. The Soul Society is where all spirits of the dead are ferried to, an afterlife essentially. At the centre of the eastern branch of the Soul Society sits the Seireite, the city of the Shinigami. The Soul Society's military arm is called the Gotei 13, and as you might suspect, is made up of 13 distinct divisions, each one headed by a captain and a vice captain, who command a number of seated and unseated officers. Each Shinigami wields their own completely unique Zanpak Toe, a katana imprinted with their soul, allowing it to take on a new form when its name is called, granting them access to amazing powers. In order to save Rukia, Ichigo and his friends are going to have to battle their way through the Gotei 13 and live to tell the tale. Ichigo and the others explode into the Soul Society and land in the rundown, impoverished area outside the Seireite's walls, known as the Rukongai District. Ichigo attempts to enter the Soul Society but is confronted by the gatekeeper Jidanbo. Although Ichigo successfully defeats him by destroying his axes, he doesn't make it far. The third division's captain, Gin Ichimaru, approaches them and uses his Zanpak Toe Shikai, the first stage of a Zanpak Toe that is activated by calling its name, to remove Ichigo from the city itself before the gate comes crashing down. In need of a new way in, Yoroichi takes the team to his old friend, Kukaku Shiba, a fireworks expert and the owner of the Kukaku Flower Crown cannon, with which they can blast themselves over the wall and into the Seireite. Taking Kukaku's brother Ganju with them, they successfully breach the Seireite, but the force of the explosion separates them all. Ichigo and Ganju end up facing off against two members of the fight-loving 11th Division, Ikaku and Yumichika, and manage to defeat them before taking a Shinigami medic, Hanataro, hostage. Hanataro leads Ichigo and Ganju through the canal network beneath the Seireite until they arrive at the foot of the Senzai queue, the compound Rukia is being held in, where they're confronted by the vice captain of the 6th division and a Shinigami Ichigo has fought before, Renji Abarai. After a bloody battle, Ichigo utilises his training from Urahara to finally defeat Renji, but in a surprising twist, Renji begs Ichigo to save Rukia from her impending execution, as the two of them are childhood friends, and Ichigo promises that he will. The three of them then retreat back into the canals where Hanataro heals their wounds and muses over the appearance of a strange hollow-like mask, which seemingly manifested to protect Ichigo during the battle with Renji. At a meeting of the captains, the highest ranking officers of the Gotei 13, Gin Ichimaru seemingly threatens the captain of the 5th division, Sosuke Aizen, which is overheard by the icy captain of the 10th division, Toshiro Hitsugaya. Later, Gin has apparently made good on his threat. Aizen is found assassinated in a gruesome fashion, and his vice captain Hinamori Momo flies into a rage before being arrested. The Soul Society is put on high alert, and war is waged against Ichigo and his friends, who are the prime suspects behind the murder. Battles begin to rage across the Seireite. Chad finds himself up against the captain of the 8th Division, Kyoraku Shunsui, while Ichigo and the others are confronted by 
by the monstrous captain of the 11th division, Ken Pachi Zaraki. Chad battles Kyoraku but is swiftly defeated and knocked unconscious, while Ichigo engages Zaraki in a brutal sword fight. Zaraki seems unstoppable, but after reaffirming both his respect for Zangetsu and realising that Zangetsu will always be by his side and he can utilise his power, Ichigo manages to cut Zaraki down ending the battle in a stalemate. Having continued onwards alone, Ganju and Hanataro reach Rukia's cell. The black cat Yoroichi rescues the dying Ichigo and heals his wounds before revealing her true form, that of a female Shinigami all along. Yoroichi confiscates the hollow mask from Ichigo before both of them sense Byakia Kuchiki, the captain of the 6th division, arriving at Rukia's cell. Byakia dispatches with Ganju in a brutal fashion, but Ichigo arrives to protect them. Ichigo prepares to challenge Byakia, but Yoroichi intervenes and knocks him out, escaping from the scene with Ichigo's body. Alone once again, Yoroichi explains to Ichigo that he's too weak to take on Byakia in his current state, but in three days, he'll learn the ultimate power of Bankai, a Zanpakuto's second and final stage wielded by only the strongest of Shinigami. Meanwhile, Uryu and Orihime battle the mad scientist captain of the 12th division, Mayori Kurotsuchi. Mayori reveals he has experimented thoroughly on the Quincy clan in the past, but Uryu shocks everyone by revealing the fruits of his training, the Let's Still, an amazing power that allows him to almost kill the captain. Enraged, Mayori reveals his Bankai, but Uryu defeats him before Mayori escapes. Activating the Let's Still means Uryu will lose all his Quincy powers, but he continues on regardless towards Rukia's cell, before being knocked out cold by the captain of the 9th division, Kaname Tosen, and arrested. Using a special device called the Tenshin Tai, Ichigo begins his Bankai training by forcing the spirit of Zangetsu to appear before him and battle. At the same time, Hinomori reads a letter left to her by Aizen before breaking out of her cell, while Orihime meets Kenpachi Zaraki and asks him to help free her friends, all of whom are currently being held prisoner deep within the Seireite. Hinamori accuses Toshiro of murdering Aizen as per the letter that was left to her in Aizen's own handwriting. Toshiro believes this to be more of Gin's scheming and they fight briefly, ending with Gin's escape after a last minute intervention by the vice captain of the 10th division, Rangiku Matsumoto, Gin's childhood friend. Ichigo's Bankai training continues when suddenly Renji discovers their secret location, but reveals that he's only there to train himself, explaining that Rukia's execution has been moved up to tomorrow. Yoroichi doesn't think Ichigo can learn Bankai in time, but Ichigo is determined to achieve it nonetheless. Zaraki and Orihime break Uryu, Chad and Ganju out of prison before continuing on through the Seireite, while Renji finishes up his training. A number of the captains, including Byakia, prepare to head to the Sokyoku Hill, the planned site of Rukia's execution. After going their separate ways from Orihime and the others, Zaraki and his men are ambushed by Tozen, his vice-captain Shuhei Hisagi, and the captain of the 7th Division Seijin Komamura, as well as his vice-captain Tetsu Zaimon Iba. While Ikaku and Yumachika battle Iba and Hisagi, Zaraki takes on Tozen and Komamura himself, resulting in Tozen activating his Bankai. Zaraki defeats him, however, but Komamura steps in to save Tozen's life. Meanwhile, Renji heads to stop the execution, but is met by his captain, Byakia. After an emotional duel, Renji unveils the fruits of his labour and activates his brand new Bankai. But despite it impressing Byakia, the captain reveals his own Bankai and nearly kills Renji, leaving him for dead. Rukia is taken to her execution, where the captain of the 1st Division and captain commander of the Gotei 13 Shigakuni Genryusai Yamamoto begins the ceremony. Rukia is to be executed with the ceremonial sword, the Sokyoku, which takes on the form of a titanic firebird. As it moves to strike her and end the execution, someone steps in and blocks the blade at the last moment. Ichigo has arrived. Chaos ensues as Ichigo frees Rukia from her bindings and destroys the execution scaffold in a display of power, and as the captains scramble to deal with him, Kyoraku arrives with Jushiro Ukitake, the captain of the 13th division, and together the two of them destroy the Sokyoku. Renji, having been healed, 
arrives on the scene and helps Ichigo save Rukia as our hero takes on Byaki Akuchiki himself. The civil war spills over as the execution is in disarray. Yoroichi arrives and battles the captain of the second division and her former protege, Soifon, while Yamamoto duels his two students, Kyoraku and Okitake. Ichigo takes on Byakuya in the ultimate clash of ideals. Ichigo fighting the law itself, while Byakuya represents that stalwart authority. Ichigo manages to keep up with the captain and even wounds him after unleashing Zangetsu's special ability, a projectile wave of Reatsu called Getsuga Tensho. However, Byakuya releases his Bankai and devastates Ichigo. Heavily wounded but undeterred, Ichigo stands and activates his own Bankai to Byakuya's dismay. Ichigo unleashes Tensor Zangetsu and blitzes the captain with his newfound speed. Though the two of them fight, Byakuya eventually outlasts and overpowers Ichigo and prepares to kill him with one swift strike. Suddenly, out of nowhere, a strange and sinister being takes over Ichigo's body, grinning devilishly at Byakuya. This new, nameless fighter turns the tables on Byakuya until Ichigo himself resurfaces, stripping the manifested hollow mask from his own face. Agreeing to end the fight with one last strike, they clash, and as the dust settles, Ichigo is victorious. Byakuya then agrees to give up his pursuit of Rukia. At the same time, suspecting a conspiracy behind the scenes of Rukia's execution, Toshiro and Matsumoto visit the Soul Society's usually forbidden courthouse, the Central 46, where they find all of the judges have been massacred. Meanwhile, Gin takes Hinamori to the chambers below, and she discovers an unbelievable truth. Her captain, Aizen, is alive. As Aizen stabs Hinamori and proceeds to nearly kill Toshiro, the depth of his deception is revealed. Aizen faked his death using the illusory power of his Zanpakuto Kyoka Suigetsu and has been pulling the strings on Rukia's execution ever since. Aizen proceeds to the Sokyoku Hill with his followers Gin and Kaname Tosen, abducting Renji and Rukia as they try to escape. During an attempted rescue, Aizen cleaves Ichigo almost in two before defeating Renji as well. With Rukia in his grasp, Aizen removes an artifact from her body, the Hogyoku. This mysterious orb will play a large role in Aizen's plans moving forward, but for now, the traitors find themselves quickly surrounded. Just when it looks like the villains have been caught, massive Menos Grande hollows tear open the sky of Soul Society, rescuing Aizen and the others in a dramatic escape. In the aftermath of Aizen's betrayal, Ichigo and the others celebrate the successful rescue of Rukia. While Rukia decides to remain in Soul Society, she and the Gote 13 thank Ichigo for his help. New alliances are formed and new friendships bloom. Ukitake hands Ichigo a badge to formally appoint him a substitute Shinigami of the Soul Society, and the gang heads back to Karakura Town to prepare for the greater battle ahead. Ichigo and his friends are back at school. Now officially a substitute Shinigami, Ichigo carries out his duties defending Karakura Town from Hollows. Uryu's powers as a Quincy have all but vanished after using his Let's Steal ability, but something is wrong. The threat of war hangs over them all, while a peculiar new student, Shinji Hirako, tries to get close to Ichigo. One night, a familiar Hollow returns to town, Grand Fisher, seeking revenge against Ichigo, only this time he's far more human-looking than he was before. When Grand Fisher attacks, Ishin Kurosaki, who is actually a Shinigami and a former captain at that, kills Grand Fisher in a single hit before discussing the creature with Urahara. They both believe Aizen is using the stolen Hogyoku to transform Hollows into beings called Aranka. Hollows that have removed the majority of their masks to gain Shinigami powers and become more humanoid. Aizen plans on creating an all-powerful army of these creatures with which to crush the world. In the same evening, a powerless Uryu is attacked by a large hollow and rescued by his own father, Ryuken Ishida, the self-proclaimed Last Quincy. Ryuken offers to restore Uryu's powers on the condition he never allies himself with the Shinigami again. Meanwhile, Shinji confronts Ichigo and reveals he too can summon a hollow mask akin to the one Ichigo used against Byakuya. Shinji offers Ichigo the chance to join his gang, warning him that the being inside him who took over his body in that fight will eventually consume him otherwise. Over time, the attacks by the Arankar grow more aggressive. Two extremely powerful Arankar arrive in Karakura Town, Ulkiora and Yami. 
and begin killing people in their search for Ichigo. Although Chad and Orohime are defeated, Ichigo tries to fight, but the mysterious being inside his soul distracts him, forcing Urahara and Yodoichi to repel the attackers. To help defend the human world, Soul Society sends an advanced team made up of Rukia, Renji, Toshiro, Matsumoto, Ikaku, and Yumichika to Karakura. When another squad of Arankar arrives, led by a malicious villain called Grimjo, a battle breaks out. Grimjo is revealed to be a member of the Espada, the top 10 strongest Arankar under Aizen's command. Although Ichigo barely scrapes by against Grimjo, revealed to be the sixth Espada, the other Arankar are all destroyed, including one at the hands of Rukia, whose Shinigami powers have finally returned. As Ichigo struggles more and more with the invasive thoughts of this strange being inside him, he spirals into a depression before seeking out Shinji and his gang. Known as the Visards, these Shinigami have all been subjected to holofication, meaning they can access the powers of a hollow by means of their own hollow mask once they've conquered the being inside them. Returning to his inner world once more, Ichigo battles this mysterious hollow who claims to be Zangetsu himself. After a rigorous training session with the Visards, which almost leads Ichigo to transform entirely into a hollow and be completely lost, Ichigo emerges in control, but not before the inner hollow threatens to take over his body again, should Ichigo ever die. At the same time, Uryu completes his training with his father, restoring his Quincy powers. Meanwhile, the Shinigami deduce Aizen's true objective. He wants to gain access to the royal palace of the Soul Society and murder the Soul King himself. To do so, Aizen needs a key called the Oken, which he plans to create by sacrificing the souls of every resident of Karakura Town. When Aizen sends another team of Arankar to Karakura, the Arankar Ulkiora blackmails Orohime into returning to Waco Mundo, the Hollow World, with him as their prisoner. Orohime attempts to say goodbye to Ichigo, revealing her true feelings for him before disappearing to Waco Mundo. Ichigo and his friends believe Orohime was taken forcibly, but Yamamoto refuses to send her aid or to allow Ichigo and the others to go rescue her. Despite this, Ichigo, Chad and Uryu, with Urahara's help, defy the Captain Commander and create a gateway to Waco Mundo and prepare to save Orohime from Aizen's clutches. Once in Waco Mundo, Ichigo and the others find themselves in a desolate place, a bone-white desert beneath a pitch-black sky. An enormous, foreboding palace called Las Notches looms in front of them, the headquarters of Aizen and his espada, making their way to the palace, Ichigo and the others run into a friendly, childlike Arankar called Nell, who accompanies them on their journey into the palace, as well as Rukia and Renji, who arrived in Waco Mundo in secret. After defeating several Arankar, including some demoted Espada, the team moves deeper into the palace. Chad is defeated by Noitra Jiruga, the fifth Espada, while Uryu and Renji team up to take down the eighth Espada, Xyloporo Grands. After a devastating battle, Rukia succeeds in killing the ninth Espada, Araniero Ararueri, but suffers near fatal wounds herself. Meanwhile, Ichigo challenges Ulkiora to a battle, but is completely outmatched by the Arankar who reveals himself to be the fourth Espada. Ulkiora deals Ichigo a killing blow, but is saved by Orohime, who in turn was rescued from her cell by Grimjo. Grimjo has Orohime heal Ichigo to full health so they can fight properly, but even after Grimjo releases his Zanpakuto, Ichigo defeats him once and for all. But in Orohime's eyes, Ichigo has begun his descent down a dark path as he uses his hollow powers more and more. Suddenly, Ichigo is attacked by Noitra, who brutally batters him. Nell is revealed to be a former Espada who, at the sound of Ichigo's cries, transforms, returning to her adult self. Although she temporarily overpowers Noitra, she returns to her child form again without warning. The tide has now shifted in the Arankar's favour, and Ichigo's group looks to have failed. Ichigo is being pummeled by Noitra, Uryu and Renji are at the mercy of Xyloporo's release form, Chad has fallen, and Rukia is about to be finished off by the seventh Espada, Zomari Larue. Then, out of nowhere, the captains arrive on the battlefield. Yamamoto authorised four captains to invade Waco Mundo and rescue Ichigo and the others, Kenpachi Zoraki, Retsu Unohana, Mayuri Kurotsuchi, and Byaki Akuchiki. 
Unohana, captain of the 4th division, rescues Chad, while Mayuri kills Xyloporo and Byakia kills Samari. And after a blood-soaked battle, Zaraki also succeeds in killing Noitra. However, just when things seem to settle down, Orohime is captured again and Aizen makes his move. He reveals capturing Orohime initially was just a ruse and traps all the captains and Ichigo's gang in Waco Mundo. Aizen, Gin, and Tosen then invade Karakura Town, but the Soul Society anticipated this and replaced Karakura with an elaborate fake, ensuring no harm can come to the residents while the remaining captains meet the Arankar head on in battle. Aizen summons his top three Espada to his side Coyote Stark, Barragan Louisenbarn, and Tyr Harabel and prepares for war. However, before the battle takes place, we must briefly return to the past. Over a hundred years ago, the Vizards were actually captains and vice-captains of the Gotei 13. Aizen, at this point the vice-captain of the 5th Division, was performing experiments on unwitting residents of Soul Society, attempting to perfect holofication to see if the barriers between Shinigami and Hollow could truly be broken. When Kisuke Urahara is inducted in as a new captain, all the captains and vice-captains who would become Vizards fall victim to Aizen's schemes. And despite Urahara's best attempts to apprehend him, Aizen instead succeeds in framing Urahara for the experiments. With Yoroichi's help, Urahara flees the Soul Society with the Vizards who prepare for the eventual battle with Aizen. The ultimate battle is here and the fate of Karakura Town rests in the balance. In Waco Mundo, Ichigo fights Ulkiora to rescue Orohime, while Chad, Rukia and Renji battle Yami, who goes from the 10th Espada to the Zero. Ichigo's battle against Ulkiora pushes them both to the limit and takes the story of Bleach to its most hopeless and darkest place, as Ichigo struggles against his foe. Though Ichigo puts up as best a fight he can, when Ulkiora reveals a mysterious and unprecedented second release form, he succeeds in killing Ichigo right before Orohime's eyes. As Orohime sobs, Ichigo reawakens, but this time he's become a mindless, horned monster. This hollow-fied version of Ichigo with a gaping hole in his chest and a mask covering his entire face makes good on his inner hollow's threat and now rips Ulkiora apart and nearly kills Uryu. However, Ulkiora severs one of Ichigo's horns, freeing him from the monster within. But Ulkiora, having been wounded beyond repair, dies after turning to dust. In the fake Karakura town, Yamamoto seals Aizengin and Tozen within a flaming prison as the battles get underway. After the Shinigami defeat the Espada's foot soldiers, Kyoraku and Okitake take on the first Espada Stark. Soifon and her vice captain Omaida battle the second Espada Baragon, while Toshiro takes on the third Espada Harabel. Toshiro and Soifon seemingly win their fights using their Bankai, but when reinforcements arrive for Aizen in the form of the strange, absent minded Arankar Wonderweiss and a colossal hollow called Hulir, the battle shifts back into Aizen's favour. As Hulir frees Aizen and Barragon and Harabel are revealed to be unharmed, the battle looks lost. Except suddenly, the Vizards arrive on the scene. Hatch again assists Soifon in killing Barragon while Love and Rose are beaten by Stark, but give Kyoraku the opening he needs to finish off the Espada. Aizen steps in and takes Harabel out himself, challenging the rest of the Gotei 13 and the Vizards to battle. Seeing his master on the front line, Tosen challenges Komamura and Hisagi, revealing his own hollow powers. Although Tosen overpowers Komamura, even going so far as to have a release form of his own, Hisagi blindsides and kills his former captain. Back in Waco Mundo, Mayuri creates a gateway for Ichigo to Karakura Town and he travels there with Unohana, arriving right behind Aizen as the fighting gets underway. Way. The soldiers of the Gotei 13 and the Vizards unite to defend Ichigo from Aizen, but thanks to Aizen's illusory tricks, he defeats all of them, even forcing Toshiro to stab Hinamori himself. Toshiro's rage allows Aizen to get the better of the captains before coming face to face with Yamamoto. Yamamoto unleashes his Zanpak toe, but the strange Orankar Wonderweiss is revealed to have been created to counter Yamamoto's ancient blade. Despite this, Yamamoto destroys him but the resulting blast takes the captain commander down. Ichigo challenges Aizen himself, with Aizen revealing that he has controlled every single action Ichigo has made so far, right down to sending Rukia to Karakura Town that fateful night. Aizen also reveals he has embedded the Hogyoku within himself in the hopes of becoming a transcendent being, 
greater than both Shinigami and Hollow. Ishin arrives, shocking Ichigo, but the two of them set their questions aside for now. Ichigo takes on Gin while his father duels Aizen. As the Hogyoku begins to transform Aizen's body, Urahara and Yoroichi arrive on the scene as well, while Gin activates his Bankai against Ichigo. Aizen begins to evolve thanks to the Hogyoku, while Gin tests Ichigo's resolve. After Aizen defeats Ishin, Urahara, and Yoroichi, he and Gin make their way to the real Karakura Town. Ishin takes Ichigo under his wing, and together they enter the Dangai, the space between the human world and the Soul Society where time flows more quickly. Ishin proposes Ichigo train within the Dangai to learn the final Getsuga Tensho, perhaps the one move that is capable of defeating Aizen at the cost of all of Ichigo's Shinigami abilities. Within his inner world, the spirit of Tensa Zangetsu fuses with the mysterious inner hollow, and they battle Ichigo. In the real Karakura town, Aizen begins killing the civilians before trying to kill Ichigo's friends, but at the 11th hour, Gin betrays and attempts to assassinate Aizen only to be killed himself. As all hope seems lost, Ichigo returns at last. Having successfully learned the final Getsuga Tensho, Ichigo forces Aizen from Karakura Town and the two battle on the outskirts. Aizen continues to evolve, transforming into an eldritch abomination, but Ichigo activates the final Getsuga Tensho, becoming Getsuga itself, and launches a blast like the Shroud of Night at Aizen. Mugetsu. Although Aizen survives, he is sealed with an Aikido spell, and the battle, and the war, is finally over. With Aizen sentenced to 20,000 years in prison, Ichigo and the others celebrate their victory. However, Ichigo begins to rapidly lose his powers, and eventually, after saying goodbye to Rukia, loses the ability to see spirits entirely. 17 months have passed since Aizen's defeat. Ichigo, no longer able to see ghosts, lives an ordinary life, with only the memories of his time as a substitute Shinigami. He's got a part-time job, and he's preparing for the end of school. Despite his new, normal life, strange occurrences begin happening. Chad hasn't been seen for quite some time, and Uryu is attacked by a mysterious man lurking near Ichigo's house. Ichigo himself meets Ginjo Kugo, a smooth-talking but untrustworthy figure who offers to help Ichigo restore his Shinigami powers. Feeling lost and powerless at the thought of his friends being injured right under his nose, Ichigo agrees to Ginjo's proposal. Ginjo is the head of an organization called Execution, made up of a group of humans with extraordinary abilities known as Fullbringers. Chad is also revealed to be a part of their team, explaining that he is a Fullbringer as well. With the help of Fullbringers Riduka and Giriko, Ichigo completes the first stage of his training and begins to reawaken his power using his substitute Shinigami badge, which remembers all of the battles he's been involved in. One evening, Orohime is ambushed by the man who attacked Uryu, a bookish individual called Tsukishima who strikes Orohime with his blade, a strange technique which doesn't seem to leave a wound or a mark of any kind. Increasingly concerned about his friends, and worried they're keeping things from him due to his lack of abilities, Ichigo pushes to complete his full bring training faster. At the same time, he's also growing wary of Urahara and his dad, thanks to Ginjo's urging, while Orohime remarks to Chad that despite not knowing who Tsukishima was, for some reason she briefly thought of him as someone she knew from deep within her past. Growing more and more isolated over time, Ichigo presses on with the training, battling execution member Jackie before unlocking the next stage of his full bring. Tsukushima arrives at the hideout itself and disrupts the training, dueling Ichigo. Ginjo steps in to fight instead and manages to repel Tsukushima long enough for the last full bringer in the group, Yukio, to encase Ichigo within his ability, transporting him to a separate dimension. When everyone departs the scene, Tsukushima slices Chad in the same way he did Orohime. Within this new dimension, Yukio administers the final stage of Ichigo's training. Here he fights Ginjo himself. Ginjo blinds Ichigo and seemingly betrays him, threatening to kill Orohime and Chad. In his rage, Ichigo sees a faint outline of Ginjo within the darkness before his body explodes with energy. Ginjo contains it, revealing Ichigo has completed his full bring at last, and he only acted the villain to force Ichigo's development along. With the training complete and Ichigo's sight restored, Ginjo reveals Ichigo has begun to sense Ryatsu again, and the time has nearly come for his Shinigami powers to be returned to him. Ichigo returns home, but is horrified to find Tsukishima there. For some reason, his sisters Karin and Yuzu see Tsukushima as a member of their family, and when Ichigo's friends arrive, 
they too seem to know who Tsukishima is. Ichigo flees as the group try to get him to accept Tsukishima, quickly discovering that almost everyone he knows has been affected by Tsukishima's Fullbring Book of the End, which is revealed to have the ability to allow Tsukishima to insert himself into his victim's past as somebody of note. Ginjo catches up with him and the two of them hide, with Ichigo resolving to kill Tsukishima in order to free his friends and family from his control. Lured to Tsukishima's hideout, Ichigo activates his full bring and attempts to fight Tsukishima while Ginjo battles the rest of execution. Chad and Orohime arrive to intercept Ichigo, also believing Tsukishima to be a dear friend. As Ichigo is overwhelmed, Ginjo is cut by Tsukishima. Uryu, having been healed by Orohime, arrives on the scene and reveals the terrible truth to Ichigo. It wasn't Tsukishima who cut him down initially, but Ginjo. Having been working with Tsukishima all along, Ginjo robs Ichigo of his powers as Ichigo sinks to his knees, sobbing. With Ichigo at his lowest point, everything seems lost when he's suddenly stabbed through the back by a glowing sword. Urahara and Ishin arrive on the scene, but neither of them is holding the blade. Instead, They've been working with Rukia and, by extension, the Soul Society to discover a way of restoring Ichigo's Shinigami powers. Rukia returns those powers to Ichigo and he transforms, once again wearing the uniform of a Shinigami while wielding a changed Zangetsu. Ichigo overpowers Ginjo as other Shinigami arrive, Renji, Byakuya, Toshiro, Kenpachi and Ikaku. The Gote 13 reveal that Ginjo is actually the first substitute Shinigami before Ichigo who went rogue and murdered a number of other Shinigami. Ginjo returns, having activated Ichigo's full bring before distributing a portion of Ichigo's power to the rest of Execution, all of whom were in on the ruse. The full bringers transform, their powers upgraded, and battles break out. Despite this, most of them are no match for the Shinigami and are quickly defeated. Tsukishima battles Byakuya, managing to injure him and affect him with the power of his full bring, but Byakuya's allegiance to Ichigo perseveres, and he delivers Tsukishima a fatal blow. Meanwhile, Ichigo and Uryu battle Ginjo, who reveals the truth about what it means to be a substitute Shinigami. The badge given to them by Ukitake is designed to monitor and restrict them at all times. The Soul Society has been surveilling Ichigo ever since he began working for them, controlling his Ryatsu levels without his knowledge, and being being prepared to kill him without hesitation should he show any sign of insubordination. Feeling betrayed by Ukitake and the Soul Society, Ginjo vanished, killing Shinigami and stealing their powers before coming across Ichigo, who he hoped might be able to share his point of view. However, in this moment, Ichigo makes a choice. He chooses to protect, and he chooses to trust the Soul Society after everything they've been through. Ichigo activates his new Bankai and Ginjo does the same in preparation for the final clash. With the Gote 13 looking on, Ichigo locks blades with Ginjo, two substitute Shinigami on different sides of the veil. Overpowering Ginjo, Ichigo cuts him down with one last strike, and as Ginjo dies, he ponders whether or not Ichigo would have ever found himself in Ginjo's position and what he might have done if he had. As the sun rises over Karakura Town, execution disperses, the members either dead or going their separate ways. Ichigo's powers have been returned to him, and with Tsukishima's death, his friends and family have been returned to normal. Ichigo arrives in the Soul Society where he confronts the captains and requests to be allowed to give Ginjo an honourable burial, shocking the Shinigami, but as he stares them down, they realise that defiance of his has always been there, and as an individual, Ichigo has grown up. Now a Shinigami once again, Ichigo Kurosaki returns to being the protector of Karakura Town. There is peace at last. However, something stirs in the darkness. An ancient enemy of the Soul Society thought to have been destroyed some 200 years ago has returned, and they're declaring war. A final war, which will decide the fate of the Bleach universe forever.